Hello and welcome everybody to Coldwater, Michigan, my hometown store here where we've got a Catalina 271 DBS finally making landfall. And I stress the finally because this floor plan was originally supposed to come out pre-pandemic and then just because everything got crazy in the world, it kind of got put on the back burner for a while. I'm really glad to see it finally uh, get its day at court basically here. Now let's, let's be real about this. Let's call a spade a spade a duck a duck. This is absolutely Catalina's version of a Grand Design Transcend 265 BH. No question about it. What I like though is they didn't just flat copycat the thing. Yeah, certainly the floor plan is very, very similar, but they've done some things differently. Like it's a little bit taller ceiling, which is something I appreciate as a bigger person when I get into the shower. If you're over six foot, you'll like that. They also went with a very interesting rear junk in the trunk camp kitchen situation station on this thing. And it's actually a really nice camp kitchen, but it's dead on the back of a 33 and a half foot travel trailer, which is interesting. I could see it maybe being very cool for some people because one of the nice things about it is it doesn't put like a hot cooking surface over on the campsite of the RV where your kids might be bebopping around. Um, instead, it just leaves the entire basically campsite and, and big awning space just wide open. Now that does mean the camp kitchen doesn't have any sort of awning coverage over it, but you know what? A little 10 by 10 easy up screen room could easily fix that and give you like a dedicated rear picnic situation, assuming you have enough length on your campsite to accomplish that. The underbelly's enclosed. Uh, they got rid of the carpet in the slide. That's a major update if you ask me. I think the exterior on this, although monochromatic, looks very good. I, I, I do wonder if that black nose is going to pick up a little bit of extra heat in the summer sunshine, but um, you know, I'd be kind of curious to hear from folks who do camp down south how you know they have experienced that. And in the meantime, I'm going to try to share some good with the bad for you, because there's a bunch of other really fun things, and there's a couple things in this, well, they're things that make you go, hmm. It should also be mentioned, this is a member of the Catalina Summit 8 series. Not all Catalinas are quite created equally. Uh, there's the Catalina Legacy Edition, which is what you've seen almost exclusively since the pandemic era first began. The Summit series that we're looking at is the uh, simpler, more basic, lighter weight, less equipment, lower cost kind of alternative option to the family right here. Um, and as a result, you know, hey, lightweight, lower cost, those are great functions. But there's things this RV is intended to do and things it's not intended to do. Let's just get this out of the way. Without question, entertainment setup on this is not the most uh, ideal. Uh, TVs are not factory standard included equipment on something like this. And if you really look, your entertainment center is kind of more directly across from the dinette than the sofa. But the thing is, that is just a big blank wall. And one of the kind of cool unsung benefits of a stick-built camper is the fact that basically every 16 inches on center or less, you've got a wall stud. So if you wanted to hang a gigantic mega jumbotron up there that you then um, you know can, can turn and pivot some way or another, like if you want to make it face the bunks at the rear sofa, you could kind of do that too. Another thing that's sort of neat is these are six foot nine ceiling height. And uh, that extra ceiling height in here is something that a lot of your more basic campers don't do. Actually, even something like the fancy Transcend 265 is only six and a half foot tall inside. Now, Catalinas uh, have retained the classic floor ducted heating. Um, there are some benefits to it, but a camper like this that is not at all built and intended for cold climate camping, I don't. I, I think that cabinet ducted heating would have actually been a better uh, option here. I think it would have it would have solved for more problems that actually matter. Um, you may also notice how all the slide flooring is now carpetless. That's another pretty cool thing on these. Though in your Catalina series, not every single window opens for airflow. Like you see the slide side seating there does not open for air. Now you might notice how that carpetless slide flooring is floating a little bit. There's nothing wrong with it. Something a lot of people don't realize is that a, uh, a floor flush slide, as it's called in the RV industry, isn't actually floor flush. And truly, that's one of the reasons that RV manufacturers put a strip of carpet in front of slide outs for a long time. Because it basically tricked your foot into, it, it masked that floor to slide little inch and a half transition toe stubber that by getting rid of the carpet, you kind of lose. Now this sofa... Well, I don't know why my voice just jumped six octaves right there. Suddenly Mariah Carey's dogs are, are screaming at me like, dude, keep it down. But uh, what I'm getting at is that sofa is interesting. It's not a jackknife. 
It's literally a bifold, which is interesting. We're going to kind of see that in a minute. I do like the treatment that both the upper and lower beds here get, though. They both have their own set of USB plugs. And I personally, I think a set of USB plugs actually matters more than a set of household plugs nowadays. What is your two cents on that? Like, what would you, if you could only have one plug in, an, in a bunk area, would you rather it be USB or household? Let me know. Leave me a little comment on that. Um, there, it's also kind of nice that there's two individual, uh, uh, curtains, one for the top bunk, one for the lower bunk. And if you notice over here, this floor plan is also pretty cool for the fact that it does have its own dedicated storage and it's not a ladder, but if you look, you've got steps that start down here at ground level and the, the kids can kind of walk themselves up two steps, then use the bottom bunk as the final step. And at that point, they can do the little hop and belly crawl into the upper bunk, probably, even if they're little kids. And if they're little littles, you probably don't want them on the top bunk. Anyway, just, I don't know, maybe that's just an estimation, I'm not sure. Another thing I think is kind of cool is the way they utilized all the potential available storage space, starting right down there, little socks and undies drawer right by the door. And I think any parent out there knows how useful it is to have, like, a sock drawer by the door. That is... Not just something silly. That is actual, usable, functional content. Now, it's also kind of crazy in this one. This is what I call Salt Lake City Special. And by that, I mean, you know, you get around the Salt Lake City uh, area, and you've got some big families. They, they, on average, a lot of times have some very large families out in that neck of the woods. And having the two double beds and the sofa that folds down and the giant U-dinette plus the private bedroom up front uh, it's a, uh, a really cool way to maximize and, and just pack a ton of sleeping space uh, into an RV. Now, it's 33 and a half foot long tip to tail, I think. So, you know, when you get to that size and you get a bunkhouse, having a larger sleeping capacity certainly is not uh, out of the question. Now, the kitchen's interesting because it has perhaps the biggest pantry I think I've ever seen. Like, I think some people are going to look at the entertainment center over here and say, why wasn't a closet right by the door? And I think they did want it to feel too blocked off and bulky right by the door. The kitchen countertop prep space is a little bit limited. You may notice here in the Summit 8 series how they don't do ovens. But if what you're looking for is like, I just need to pack a whole bunch of stuff into this thing, and uh, we're not going to do a ton of cooking in the RV. If your family does a lot of your cooking outside, and if you're looking to enjoy your entertainment outside, this might be a good option for you. If you're looking for like a, a super kitchen suite kind of situation, I think it's pretty clear this is not the ideal RV for that kind of use and purpose. Although, for privacy's sake and for a little bit of noise dampening in some cases, I think some folks do appreciate the lack of peekaboo, I smell ya bathroom door. And this bathroom, kind of like, you know, the kitchen and the living room, it has some cool features and it has a couple things that I, I think I would personally like to see done differently. But maybe that just means it's a great camper that's not the right one for me. I don't know. First of all, though, how about uh, that? That's as fluffy friendly as it gets right there, folks. The space around that toilet, if you're a, uh, a person of stature or have long legs like mine, it is, uh, it's definitely a place where you can sit down and set up shop for a while. And since this is six foot nine, they did a thing here that I actually kind of like. I'm a little bit over six foot tall. Your average American man and woman are going to be able to stand in that shower without their head in the skylight. So they didn't put a skylight in it. And I'm sure that that was primarily a cost control measure. But frankly, your skylights and specifically the seals around the skylights, because of the uh, greater intensity of hot, cold variation around that skylight, those seals tend to be the first ones to fail. So getting rid of that skylight literally eliminates the number one most frequent point of leaks in an RV. That is something that I'm okay with. I love the big giant storage space in the bathroom. I don't like that it's wide storage that is open face. I would at least some kind of tension band or bar or something. And I know that there are some DIY kind of solutions that I could come up with there, but it is nice when you don't always have to do it yourself, uh, you know, on a brand new RV. But then again, you know what? For more dollars and cents, a lot of these things that I'm pointing out that you could look at this and say, well, um, you know, I don't like the RV because it, it because of that or a lack of something. Well, that's, you know, the, the RVs with more dollars and cents backed into them tend to solve for those problems. So that's just kind of a give and a take. Uh, this is a short queen. 
So it is one of those uh, 74, 75 inch long mattresses. A true queen mattress could fit. You're gonna have to do the butt scoop boogie to scoot around it. And again, I do like how your sleeping areas, your dedicated ones, have some USB plugs on both sides. A lot of your more budget sensitive trailer classes like this will tend to only have USB plugs on one side or the other. And it's a little coachman thing, but like the little anchors to keep the uh, the window shades tied up out of the way. It's just little stuff like that uh, I, I personally appreciate. TV hookups uh, off up here in the corner, by the way, just in case you do feel like adding a TV to this bedroom. I'll be surprised if 10% of, uh, of these sold ever end up with some kind of TV uh, over in the bedroom area, though. Uh, your, both your hanging closets basically while well, they're, they're hanging closets they're not just like wardrobe uh, or uh, dresser shelves or anything like that they actually do have some hanging storage in there although you could always add shelving uh, as needed and then uh, a real quick look down here under the bed reveals that you do have uh, a nice chunk of like footlocker storage space the trick with that is you unfortunately lack any sort of gas struts from the factory you saw that i used the jack crank to prop it up it's okay it kind of works but it's not ideal speaking of it works but it's not ideal let's talk about road mode real quick Rather than full, easy front-to-back travel access, which I've never seen a builder of this floor plan have full, easy front-to-back travel access, uh, this one has what I call two-stage travel access. And that, the way that I phrased that, it sounded eerily like something Tina Turner would say, you know, like, this floor plan never does travel access nice and easy. But thankfully, this one does have that second door. This will get us into the bedroom and bathroom, but let me throw another idea at you here. Another reason this second door is kind of handy on this floor plan is what if you put the kids to bed, but you don't go to bed right away? Um, I know that my wife and I tend to stay up after the kid goes to bed. Well, being able to have the kid in bed in the back and then still have a way to access and slide in and out of the RV without banging doors and waking everybody up Everybody sleeps better, everybody has a better day tomorrow. All right, so let's talk towing real quick here because I think that this is an RV that a lot of people are gonna say, um, can I tow it with my half ton? And I think a lot of people who are very happy to take your money are gonna say, you betcha, Mr. Customer, just sign here. Or Ms. Customer, I, I, I don't know your lives. Um, I'm not quite that eager to jump onto the half ton train and i'll tell you why like you see uh i don't know like a, a 6600 ish pound empty dry weight and okay that kind of sounds half ton towable but then you realize it's got like a 10,000 pound gvw and it's 33 and a half foot long even if i personally had a very capable half ton if i was going to go through wind zones or major elevation changes i wouldn't want to tow this with that vehicle personally um, that's just, you know, my two cents there. Now, um, if you're an experienced driver and you're like, nah, my truck can do it. Then, well, oh, oh, okay. That's up to you. But I, you know, if I was going to be local and I had a good heavy half ton, maybe if I was going to go long distance, I'd probably recommend a three quarter. I don't know that you got to go heavy duty diesel HD, you know, common gas or three quarter would probably yank this thing anywhere and everywhere. Cause again, the, the longer length of this will more easily push around a smaller vehicle. So that's a major thing to kind of keep in mind there. I like how the windows are tinted on these. Um, also, you might notice it's easy to see since we're standing back this far, it's a single headed sewer monster. It does not have multiple sewer hookup uh, points and locations, which is a, a very handy kind of thing. Now it's not made for any sort of extreme weather, super cold camp capability or anything like that. That is not who Catalina is and what Catalina does whatsoever. I do also appreciate the, uh, the full front pass-through that we have going across, <laughs> well, the front here. That being said, it is obviously a little bit smaller door on the other side and an extra large door over on this side. Both are magnetically held back. Uh, they are solar prepped and wired up uh, so that if you, uh, well, they do, first of all, offer a factory solar package. But if you want to uh, do some work after the fact, they've uh, got a prep plug up on the roof where what you can do is, uh, you know, put a panel on, uh, install a charge controller, and then finish running the wires up to the batteries. That's what prepped means. Uh, whereas solar ready, which is what Heartland does, means you literally just plug in a panel and it's already done. Holy crap. 
I'm just realizing that is a big power awning standing totally broadside against it here. They have covered both doors with that. And again, the RV has a camp kitchen, but because the camp kitchen's not over here on the camp side of the RV, it just leaves maximum wide open patio space, which is, I'm kind of digging it a little bit. Although it looks plain, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing by any stretch. One uh, kind of caution I do want to give here is you have your furnace and water heater exhaust over here on the campsite of the RV. That is a six gallon gas and electric fast uh, recharge water heater, by the way. When they're over here on the campsite of the RV, uh, they can more easily, uh, you know, come into contact with little kids running around in the spring and the fall. Uh, if you're going to be running those, um, you know, well, the furnace, the water heater, you're going to be running probably all the time. So you're going to want to make sure you, maybe you put your table there, tell the kids stay away from it, you know. Now, if uh, you noticed in our earlier, um, <clears throat> pardon me, floor plan and a flash footage, this has the you know, multi-color, multi-strobe pattern disco party lights. You can kind of see it doing its thing under there. Now, if you're not into all that, if you just want a blue light or a white light or a red light or a green light, whatever the case may be, if you want to Dr. Seuss your light patterns, you can set it to just one color and tell it to stay there. But you can also tell it to, you know, go through various strobe patterns and speed up or slow down to whatever, I don't know, feels cool and appropriate for you. Now let's talk uh, some running gear on this because this actually does not run on a, uh, a common Lippert chassis. This is actually a Norco huck bolted frame, very similar to like what Winnebago runs on. Um, uh, Catalina's been doing that for a while. They're one of the very few in this class that does anything different. You obviously see how your spare tires uh, mounted down below. Now you got your little leash latch over here uh, to keep the uh, drunken uncles, uh, you know, tied down like a wallaby sport. Anybody pick up that reference? Anyway, now you see that little black circle? That is a little cold water uh, outside sprayer port. And this right here is something, again, it is very interesting and very unconventional. It's the junk in the trunk uh, camp kitchen, basically, where they had a chunk of space under the bunks. And under the bunks, instead of a trunk, <laughs> they put a camp kitchen. And I don't know. What do you think about that? Is that genius or insanity? Was that a uh, Animaniacs good idea or bad idea? Now, these have had a walkable roof for a long time, but they're finally putting that bracket up top there. So if you want to get one of those telescopic removable ladders, you can more easily access this. And I forgot to have this open. Hopefully that baggage door is unlocked. And ooh, bank error in your favor. Here's the thing. This, there, there's still a trunk in the, uh, the <laughs> under the bunks here. It's a bunk trunk. <laughs> it's a junk in the bunk trunk. I don't know. There's something there. Maybe not. I'll see if I can't figure it out sometime. The thing is, though, my thought is if cargo shifts, it could be a little bit tricky to reach the end of that. So I think what you might want to do is get some kind of storage tote that you stick in there first. So loose objects are uh, a little closer to you and a little easier to get a hold of. That's just, you know, my, my two cents, just an idea that I had, and I just <coughs> ran into the building. Ow. So thanks again for tuning in. Like I said, just flat out their version of the Transcend floor plan. But Cougar also makes a good version of this. So which one's the best for you? Well, if you haven't seen them, what I'm gonna do is leave you some links in the video description, not only to check for pricing and availability, but also to check out those other similar floor plan RVs from other builders, and let me know which one you would go with and why. And of the three that I mentioned, Transcend, Cougar, and this Catalina, I, uh, this is probably going to be the least expensive of all three, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be the best fit for you. Who knows, maybe you wanna spend extra money, go up to the Cougar, get all the widgets and whiz bangs. I don't know your life. I just know my way around a couple campers, man. <laughs> and that's just like my opinion, man. So when you're ready, uh, remember the rug really pulls the room together, dude. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. How many people have no idea what I'm even referencing right now?